If you're watching this, that means this video has been clicked on. I've been lost in the digital wilderness, wondering if we'd ever discover analog again, seemingly lost to time. But we've been lurking in the sub-20 IRE values, also known as shadows, to rekindle the lost art of the perfectly imperfect, to create a portal to an era we thought had ended. There's no turning back now, because I left my rewinder at home. It's the thing that rewinds. Tapes. I'm running out of time here, so let me take you to me, and he'll... I'll tell you about this tool that could save your vintage edit. And this one, too. Hey everybody, it's Tim from Motion VFX, and if you don't know me, now you do. We're here with a brand new plugin for DaVinci Resolve called M-Style VCR. This pack provides simplicity for creating the vintage VCR tape look while allowing for a lot of customization. Let's rewind our way into Resolve and take a look. So once you have M-Style VCR installed, you can go into Resolve and go right up to your Effects tab on the Edit page, and we will have new effects in our Video Transitions, Titles, and Effects tabs. We're going to take a look at our Video Transitions first, so we can pull this down, go to Motion VFX, scroll down until we find M-Style VCR. So we're going to click on that, and then we have five different transitions to choose from. We can take a look at these real quick. We can just click and drag them on top of our clips, and we can preview what that looks like. And if we go up to our inspector, we can see that we have a bunch of different parameters that we can adjust. So let's say the flash strength is a little too much. I can just bring this down a bit and we can play it back and we only get a little minor flash when we transition. We also have VCR glitch, which will play back a glitched transition. We also have noise, rewind, and roll. And roll is an interesting one because it'll cut to the next clip, transition, show a bit of the old clip, and then cut right to the next one, giving somewhat of a distortion effect. But we can go in here and let's say we don't want this saturation applied. We want the saturation to stay the same so it's not quite as jarring. Could also do that. Or we could adjust our waviness, the displacement, so we can add a little bit more scratchiness instead of waviness. And we can also say this is quite a bit of grain, so we can dial that back down as well. The rewind one is particularly interesting because we can determine whether or not it goes up or down on the transition. So if you go right up here to direction, you can have it go down, and that means the front clip will go down and the other one will transition in from the top. And the inverse is true if you click up, you can have it scroll up where the next clip will come in from the bottom of the screen. And fun fact, this is not a nighttime clip. Now if we scroll down to our titles and open up our title selection, and we have four different, no, I know how to count, six different titles that we can apply. Now let's just say we wanted to make a caption on this clip right here, we can throw this on, and we can go into our content controls, title controls, effects controls, and drop shadow controls. So if I go into title as an example and bring up my scale on the text, you can really see what's going on with this text. It's giving a little bit of a jitteriness to it, but we can add a little bit more jitteriness to it. So let's see what kind of effects we have on here. And maybe we want to say something like, beware of the deer. We can adjust for how distorted we want this text to be, as well as the speed at which it distorts. And then we have our prism distance, which is basically a offset for two different text layers so we can further add to the depth of the distortion. Or maybe we can go with the lower third style. and Maybe this is back in time. Maybe this deer's from the 50s. Who knows, were you there? I certainly wasn't when I took this footage. But we also have different types of effects. If we have a description that we need to insert, we can place this anywhere we want as well. And on each one of these titles, we have an in and out point. So if we wanted to either pop on immediately, or if we wanted to transition in and out, we can use these in and out toggles. And that will allow us to have an animation in and out of every title and effect that we have. Now, if we scroll down to our effects, this is where things can get really interesting. 
go all the way down to M style VCR. And for these effects, because they're fusion compositions, it's better if you put them on a adjustment clip because then you don't have to worry about them coming before color and having color applied to them because whatever's applied in fusion will go before the color unless you use a compound or fusion clip and then apply the effect from there. A couple of them that I like in particular are the soft focus color look so I can apply this here and you can see it has kind of a faded look but we can also use this as a dream sequence type of an adjustment. So if we go over to our inspector over in the effects tab we can see that we can turn off a couple of these adjustments here. So if we just turn these off and bring up a soft glow, and now we have the deer that showed up in a dream. Whose dream you ask? We don't know, it was a dream. But we can also affect our edges a little bit to kind of get some of that VCR or tape-like fringing on some of our edges. We can also add some adjustments to further color correct some of these faded looks. Or if you wanted to have a more contrasty look, you can also do that as well. Another one I really like is the viewfinder and we can stack some of these adjustments too so I can throw the quality reduction onto this one and then throw the viewfinder on top of that and maybe we want not quite that much of a quality reduction so I'll increase the pixel count here a little bit and then we have our viewfinder lines that also have some distortion on them. We have the ability to change our frame width and height as needed, as well as some of our color characteristics if we wanted to change those. But one really cool trick with the prism distance, now by default the prism distance is just how far out the color channels are separating from each other. And they don't really move much, they just kind of stay static. But if we wanted to add some sort of shaky distortion to this prism effect, if we right click our prism distance we can hit modify with and perturb. Now if we go into the fusion page by clicking this icon here. We can click on our M style VCR node, go to modifiers, and now we have our perturb modifier that we just set. We can just bring our value to zero, and then let's bring strength way down to, let's just say 0 0.02. And then we can just increase our speed. A uh, speed of 10 might not actually be enough, so we can just type in here, and let's just make it 50. And now if we go back to the edit page, we can see that the distortion is twitchy. And this can be a really good modifier to apply to any of them that have a prism distance. For example, if we just remove these real quick, if we go back to that soft focus color look and we throw that on, we can look at our prism distance once again, right click on it, go to modify with, perturb, and then go to the fusion page, select the node, go to modifiers, and then keep note of this value. We can actually just copy it and bring it to zero and paste it into strength because strength is essentially what our highest value is going to be. And then change speed to 50 just to make it go fast. And we can see some of that red and blue fringing happening just periodically and it could just add a little bit of flavor to the flickering of the footage. You can even make it more extreme if we wanted to. If there was like a glitch effect that you wanted to stack this onto, that could work as well. Or we could even slow this down so it's a little bit more of a gradual change in distortion as it's going through. But that's just one example of a way you can use different types of modifiers. You could even do something similar with the gain if you'd use the perturb modifier on the gain. If we go into fusion, select the node, and then go to that perturb modifier, we want to keep the value one because that's the default value, and then we'll set strength to how much we want to deviate from it. And then we can probably increase our speed a little bit so that it flickers a little bit more. And now as we play through, seeing the exposure change a little bit, we could probably speed this up even more. And I'm kind of thinking this one's a little bit too much, so I'll just reduce that. But that's just a fun little way you can use a simple modifier to randomize some of these parameters in order to get an additional effect. So we're going to go ahead and delete this. Another one that can be really useful are glowing edges if we have a lot of edges or burn distortion. If we want to kind of simulate that faded edges look. And it can just add a nice little touch by itself just to make things glow a little bit as if the texture or detail was starting to get lost. We can also add things like distortion and maybe add a frame on top of that so we can really mimic the effect of having a tape that's starting to lose its magnetism. And then of course we can add some quality reduction to that and we can move the position of these as well so we can properly order how we want these to look. 
And just like that, without too much effort, we have some decent looking archive footage. So a lot of these effects can go really well with each other to emulate the look that you're going for. And those looks are just a few of the ways that you can utilize M-Style VCR. This plugin is available for both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro on MotionVFX.com. Check out the links in the description, it'll take you right to it. And also there's a button down there that has a bell on it, I like that one personally. But thank you so much for checking us out, hopefully we'll see you in the next one, and have a great day. Take care.